technicians, aspiring technicians, and Steven. Today we're going to be going over the overload relay, also known as just the overload. This guy protects a large load from an overload condition. There are a couple different styles of overload relays. There is the electronic overload relay and the thermal overload and magnetic overload. And sometimes there are overloads that bring in several different methods of protection. We're going to be going over its purpose in industry and the method that it protects from an overload condition and some of the information that's shown on the sides. So basically how an overload relay functions is they have a bar of metal going through them that is not interrupted by the relay at all. These relays do not cut off current directly to the motor in the three-phase system. These overload relays, when they sense an overload condition, they actually open or close the normally open or normally closed contacts right here. And by doing so, it tells a controller or it actually physically cuts off the contactor to pull out and stop power going to a motor or or whatever load this is protecting. I sure wish I had equal sized overloads and contactors so that this would look more legit. Normally the overload and the contactor are about the same size. So once again, since the overload doesn't disconnect the load going to the motor, it will by informing a controller or actually tripping normally closed contacts, remove power from the contactor. And this contactor that was normally pulled in will then release and it releases power to the motor by removing the flow of amperage to one of these two points of contact. This is the solenoid that would pull in the contact. We'll give you a real wiring example here in a second. I thought it would be worth mentioning to those who are new to this topic. The overload itself does not physically disconnect power to the motor or the, the load that it's protecting. I've got my meter on one side of the overload and on the other side and I'm going to check continuity and I'm going to show you and purposefully trip the overload. Alright, you got continuity and when I hit the test button, nothing stops. It still has continuity. But when you check across these normally closed contacts right here, the NC you see, has continuity you hit the test button open this is how the overload relay actually protects the motor from an overcurrent condition you would either want to wire a normally closed loop here through your controller that's looking for a normally closed loop so that when the overload trips and opens these normally closed contacts it will release power to the contactor and save your motor or prevent a thermal incident. In addition to the trip button right here to make sure the contact is working, there's also a there's also a screw right here that you can turn to trip it. It will stay tripped until you use the reset button right here, the blue button. Now it's tripped. Now I will have to physically hit the reset button. And when I do, the contacts will close again. All right, let's check out the nomenclature on the side of this overload. The current range is the current range that it's protecting. This overload is protecting the main motor of an air compressor. If the air compressor is taking in maximum amount of air it can and making the highest pressure that it can, that is typically around the full load current that that motor is supposed to draw. If you decide that it's 180, then you will set it to 180 by the dial on the front. It will trip the overload in an overcurrent situation based on the trip class setting, which is set here on the inside of the overload. Two things we need to go over also is the reset mode, automatic versus manual, but also the trip class. There are trip classes of 10, 15, 20, and 30. There may be more, but this overload has a settable trip class. And we'll explain the differences of those trip classes in a moment. Now back to the current range mentioned. 
whatever setting you set this, let's say the motor's full load current is 180. You set it to 180, it actually trips. The trip rating is 120% of F of the full load current setting. So if you, if you set it at 180, it will not trip until 216 amps, but only if the motor remains at 216 amps for a certain amount of time, and that's related to the trip class. The CT ratio on this is 200 to five. I made another video about the controls for a 200 horsepower air compressor and CT ratio was mentioned in that. If you wanna go and check that out, I'll leave it in the description below. But basically, CT stands, stands for current transformer and it sort of like a voltage transformer. It transformed the current down to an amount that this little electronic doodad can read and work off of. And just like on the other side of the, and just like on the other side of the overload, it mentions Subscribe. the trip class range, 10 to 30. I just showed you that and we're gonna go over that in a second. It's also worth mentioning you should pay attention to the tightening recommendations used on these bars. As you can see, these threaded bars on the bottom, this one's still good, but the one on the left has been stripped out. See that copper color in there? Well, it's actually copper. This is a copper bar and it's plated with something else. And copper's really soft, so it's pretty easy to strip these out. So in your manual that came with the overload relay, it mentions what the buttons do. Look, look, I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you what my old VP used to tell me, VP of service department. R, T, F, M. If you ever got a question about anything, just get the manual and read it. You read English, it's in English, just read it. All right, so these are the different trip classes. You can see the curves look just slightly different and we're gonna run down how they are different right now. We're gonna look at one chart here, class 15. The bottom numbers is the multiple of full load amps. Put some numbers down there so you can tell what those lines mean, these vertical lines. This is two times full load amps and this is three times full load amps. The number on the side is an amount of seconds, one second, 10 seconds, 100 seconds. So basically what all this means is under class 15, let's just say you set the overload to 100 full load amps. If it experiences an overload situation of 200 amps, which is two times 100, for a period of 10 seconds, it will trip the overload. Now, why is there a dotted line versus a solid line? Up here it mentions dotted line is a hot start, solid line is a cold start. So basically if everything's been running for a while and you experience this two times overload situation, it'll trip off in 10 seconds. And if you just cold started the machine, it hadn't been running, you will trip off, you'll trip the overload in about 50 seconds, all right? I wrote it all down for you. Now I'm gonna write them all down side by side and compare. And we're gonna compare them for a two times full load current situation. All right, so you can double check my work if you want. So full load amps set to 100 amps. If you get to two times the full load amps, which is if you get to 200 amps, class 10 trips in six seconds. Class 15 trips in 10 seconds. Class 20 trips in 14 seconds and class 30 trips in 16 seconds, approximately. To give you a wiring example of how this overload could protect the motor by the contactor, I'm gonna hook up my suicide cord to the, I mean, my three-pronged, three-wire, safe in the hands of the emotionally stable cord and show you how it would protect. Move it, kitty. All right, so let's see how we got this guy run. We got my, we got my safety cord. White wire is for the neutral on the right side of the contact right here to pull in the solenoid. Black wire for funsies, I got it running over here to, through my meter, through my meter, 
out the red into this normally closed contact and out the other normally closed contact in a yellow wire to feed the hot to the other side of this solenoid. So I got the meter wired in in series so I can see how many amps the solenoid and the contactor is drawing. The amperage, yellow for AC. All right, now we're gonna plug in our safety cord. You're gonna watch the contactor pull in and an amperage show on the doodad. Wow, that's barely anything. That is 0.011 amps alternating current, so 111 milliamps? That can't be right. We're gonna ohm out this solenoid in a second and see if that corresponds to the amperage that it's pulling with 120. So right now, contactor pulled in. Whenever you wanna test, you can test. We'll open these contacts and cut off power to the contactor. Oops. Pulled out, release, pulled in. Pull down, pulled in. Bed goes up, bed goes down. Bed goes up, bed goes down. Bed goes up, bed goes down. And there was, and I mentioned earlier this trip screw. I'm gonna, I'm gonna unscrew this guy. Trip. Power pulls out. Your motor had an overloaded situation. It's tripped. You come up to it and you release. Motor is allowed to start up again and you're off to the races. If you're designing a control system using an overload, you're really gonna wanna think about if you're gonna use auto or manual trip. Say you've got a switch, turns on your motor, boop, turns on. If there's nothing else keeping the motor to stay off after a opening of these contacts in a motor trip situation. Whenever this is in auto reset, it will just close these contacts again, start your motor right back up if your on switch is still on, and maybe overload again if the, if the overcurrent situation has not been addressed. And fry your motor, or cause a fire, or anything else. Weld your contactor shut. If you're starting up a new machine at a customer site and your customer is less informed about these electrical components, you might wanna just set it to manual so that when it trips, they won't be able to just go to the controller, reset the situation and start it back up again. They would actually have to, oh, they would actually have to open up the cabinet, hit the manual reset button, and acknowledge it that way. And it's likely if they're, if they're, it, it's likely if they're comfortable with getting into the electrical cabinet, they know enough about the machine or about motors to consciously decide to reset and continue running the machine. If you had it in automatic, they could just come over and hit the reset button on the controller and continue running. Maybe ignorant to the fact of what could be going on with the motor. All right, I don't wanna get in here a little bit see what's going on. I feel free to destroy this thing if I have. It is now fodder for the parts cannon. Okay exactly what I thought. The CT mentioned on the side of the overload shows the current transformer Subscribe. ratio, Subscribe. 200 to 5. So if you've got 200 amps flowing through this bar, it goes through this part of the current transformer. 200 amps would convert down to 5 amps. So at this end, 5 amps would flow through this wire. This wire, this wire comes out here and here. One goes into the one goes into the brains, the other end comes over here, connects, and still goes into the other sides of the brains. It basically creates a loop. Inside the brain box is where you measure the current indirectly that's flowing through these bars. And that's how this brain decides when to trip. 